also beautiful. It's true. Amazing. Yeah. Did you think I was talking to you personally? Oh, uh, yeah, I did. <laughs> What kind of questions do you have? We have one right over here from Beth. Um, in the book, and from what I've heard, that um, when you erase something, then it's gone forever from everyone. I would like to know that um, when the hospital was those patients were cleared and cleansed, or, and it was even closed down. Does that mean the program is gone from the guys that were, are here in the prisons too? I mean, was there a clearing from them as well that, uh -huh. that they were released? And, and does that mean the program won't ever come back, those, yeah. those crimes that those guys committed? Does that, that's a wonderful question. That's a question that I asked Dr. Hulen when I was interviewing him and I was doing the research for the book Zero Limits. And I'll call him up to add to that in a second. Um, but what I was told is there are so many programs that this is like, t as you clean them, it is like taking a straw out of a big stack of hay or a bale of hay. And so you've taken one out and you might have taken another one out, but there are more there. And that's just the thing that I have found depressing, which I am cleaning on that there is an unimaginable amount of it, that we are carrying so many of these weeds, so many of these programs, so many of these beliefs, so many of these, this data, that in his mind goes all the way back to when we were amoeba, you know, or space dust, that we, we had it then, we've carried it through, so it's all accumulated within us. And as you clean, you can take enough out to see a difference in a person that might have been in a mentally ill uh, hospital, but that doesn't mean that it's been completely cleaned from the planet. Not yet. There's still more cleaning to do. Uh, Narissa and I saw a show one day on epigenetics. And I watched the whole show and missed what she got out of it. And what she got out of it was totally brilliant. At the end of it, she said, that whole program was describing the science of zero limits. And I thought, I've got to watch that again, because I missed it. And uh, we did watch more. We did dis uh, discuss it some more. And what it was pointing out is that you know about DNA. They're saying with epigenetics that there are markers in your DNA that have come from generations past. So something, if uh, your great-great-grandmother, grandfather, someplace like this, uh, starved, that there's a marker in their DNA that has gone through their system and has ended up in your system. And it will show up in some different ways. In some ways, it may be positive and you have a stronger body. In some places it may be negative and you have a weaker body. But the point is that this is just an example of a program that you have no awareness of that you have inherited. I've uh, studied a lot of different of the, uh, the muscle builders, the weight loss people, the bodybuilders, and one of them, Dave Draper. He's in his 60s now. He has been fit his entire life. He, has been, he was in the uh, movies in the 50s. He was this uh, blonde, um, I forget what they call him, the blonde bomber is what they call him. And Dave Draper's still around, but he just recently had a heart attack, and he had to have heart surgery. Now, this is a man who has worked out, who has ate right, who has been fit. He is still fit now, even though he had to go through surgery. When he came out, the doctors explained to him that you didn't do anything to cause this. You inherited it. And I thought that was so significant that it's actually like the programs that are in us. Now, I think it was, was it Barry that saw Robin fall? Yeah. It, it was you. And he felt a little bit of guilt about that. Because when he came up, he told me about it. There was a big pull of blood. He was one of the people that was there on the, the scene to, see, to take care of stuff. And he felt responsibility. And he actually even asked me, he says, what I, was I responsible for that? And what I heard what he was asking was, am I guilty for causing that? Am I to blame for that? And this is not about guilt or blame. Guilt and blame are actually programs. This is about 100% responsibility. It doesn't mean that you look within and go, why? Why did I do that to her? It means, oh, I have more cleaning to do. And you just keep cleaning. 
So when it comes to these mentally ill patients and so forth, as I understand it, and I do want to hear what he has to say, because he was there. I'm just telling you from a journalistic kind of uh, investigator's point of view what I've learned, is that there are more programs to clean. But enough had been cleaned in those particular <coughs> people that they were pronounced healthy and they could leave. I don't have any comment. <laughs> he has no comment. Wow, she says, is that the same as the sins of the parent will visit the heads of the children? No, it means that you are responsible to clean it up. So I, no, 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 see, you're, you're, you're going genetic, genetic. No, you're looking away from yourself. And it's never going to get cleaned up unless you look only at yourself. Only. There's nothing out there. One of the things I learned from Morna a long time ago, no matter what came up, she would say, look at yourself. Look at yourself. Now, you're trying to fuss around with information. You're not going to get the information. You're only going to get the information out of inspiration. You're going to get stuck in that stuff. And that's the only reason I'm here, saying you can, you can unstuck. But if you're trying to figure out how, you know. Now, at Hawaii State Hospital, only divinity knows. I just did my cleaning. So divinity decides as you d which gets cleaned up. But I know one thing, the cleaning I did there will go, go on that land forever and ever until it's all finished up. Forever and ever. So anytime my friend Joe, where's Joe? Joe or I or you do any cleaning, once you start it, it will go on forever and ever until it's done. But if you're fussing around <laughs> trying to figure it out, it's not going to go. So every time my friend, uh, um, Joanne there, who works with uh, folks who have difficulty, you have folks who have difficulty, people don't, I mean, like immigrants who don't have, yeah, so, yeah, sorry, illegal. So now she works with people like illegals who cannot find jobs, but her job is not to get jobs for them. Her job is to clean and the divinity will provide. But if she's stuck in the stuff like for example, why would somebody from Mexico want to come all the way up to Hillsborough, Oregon? What, what, what is that urge in them that would cause them to do that, that would cause them to lose their family? I mean, thousands of children die every year trying to cross. But why does a person want to go to Hillsborough, um, Oregon? What do you suppose that might be so? Yeah. Because there's something in him that says, this is where I'm going to find freedom. Something that pushes him, and he has no idea. So if, once he finds there, he finds everything perfect for him. But you see, in our great country, because we don't know any better, because we need to be 100%, we put borders up. And, and I, tell you that, I tell you something that you won't hear any place. If we don't let the, the countries below our border come, Economically, in 20 years, we'll go down the tube. When I have to go to England with $3,000 and find out it's only worth 1500 it's crazy. Nobody wants our money. Yeah, so now I give the class in um, Do um, Cork, Ireland. And so I get, a, I get a thank you note from a very good friend of mine. He and I got to be good friends. Old man from Scotland. He says, thank you for the class and the 60% discount. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but people, people have something in them which moves them to go to certain parts of the world because it's part of their journey. But if we put walls up, and wall, the worst walls is to put up walls in our thoughts. Then, yeah. but that are just, I, I know people want answers, but there are no answers. There's only zero. Because this is the address of God. Yeah. This is not the address of God. That's not. This is this is data called chaos. And this data goes against the divinity. It's hatred for the divinity. Absolute hatred. Yeah. Yes. <coughs> I'm trying to be as blunt as with you, because I know some of you are going to leave. I, I want to make sure you go, dong. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to add something to the story of the illegals. 
I hale akala always if I come to him with anything he always says I can I know what he's going to say clean on clean period and so I did one day because I had been carrying this sadness which about the illegal situation for years and years and he made that I started to clean on it and I was so lifted because and he made another comment about something about them going home maybe about them going home and as I was cleaning sure enough in the next few days I'm driving we're all driving somewhere to do something and they started talking about going home them they want to go home going home to Chile going home mm -hmm. to Mexico going home because mm -hmm. now they're they're done why are they done because she had to do her cleaning mm -hmm. now they I, can go home yeah before cleaning I was collecting immigrants from all over I have like 20 here 20 there whatever and I'm busy as a bee beaver trying to call everybody come on you you know it's going to be great and they're they're excellent getting jobs and until I clean I, I, I never heard them start to have conversations about you know le how they're planning to go back to go home to their home of course they want to do that and it, it's finally it's just in him telling that story I remembered that of course yes that's that's what's been happening so I tell you what my my what, how wonderful my relationship is with my friend Joanne um, usually I'm on the road and things things happen in the house that need to be um, taken care of so I don't have to do that anymore I just called Joanne and I tell you that there was a fellow who put in a new deck I mean redwood it was so beautiful now I'm stepping on my deck and redwood is a cleaning process that's what the Indians use. So what the Indians used to do, the redwood, is they're mentally walking the tree, whoom, up they would go into the sky. They make that connection. So as I was walking on the deck, I mean, she was willing to clean, I was willing to clean. I got the right deck. I got a redwood deck. Yeah. And this guy was incredible. I got to meet, I got to meet his family, you know. He, he brought his family. His, his mother-in-law, his... Mm -hmm. So I have to do more cleaning. The, funny, the funniest thing is I call this group my B team, which means for us just B. Because I am shocked that I'm even doing it. So, you, you know, by cleaning, I mean, I used to be a tennis and golf coach. <laughs> and all of a sudden I have this other career pop up. And I'm just doing this whole immigration thing. <laughs> and... I just find it hilarious that why am I doing this? I have no clue. It's just, it's there, I'm working away. And he has, I feel so sorry for Ihali Akala because somehow, I don't plan it, but every time we're even near his house, he's seeing all of the B team, their families, the whatever. It looks like a church service, and we didn't plan it. They're lined up outside his door. <laughs> Have you, and ever, he's so have you ever been around people who only speak Spanish? <laughs> <laughs> they come really close to you. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and we, I just crack up because he's so kind. He doesn't, you know, he's just like he was expecting them. And it was like... <laughs> so any, anything else that you can ask me or, or my friend on our court? Now, did you see that? Were you watching? Why didn't the mic work? Something's going on with us. <laughs> yeah. You shouldn't be cleaning with these things. I tell you, otherwise you're going to miss a cleaning that maybe three or four generations now, that, that memory comes is going to hit somebody in your family. But you should be, you should be alert, always being alert. Yeah. Yeah. Did I understand you correctly when you compared yourself to the goalie in, in hockey, that you put up your own shields, or when you do this work, and can you just talk more about that, please? Yeah, like I, like this hat I got on is a shield. I only wear it because it provides a shield, um, meaning that that stuff's going to come up in the room for which I'm going to be responsible, and as the as the data comes up, the shield will will go yep, and it'll be done.
I, uh, it's not a question, it's more of a comment, and I would just like to contribute in this small way, and if it can help anybody understand. I know that a hello, lot of... Hello, you have to make sure now, you're only talking about yourself. I am, okay, I understand I'm, that, I'm, I'm taking responsibility. I, I'm, I'm watching you. I, I understand that. We're not that. here to preach or anything like that. We're no, 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 I, okay. I understand okay. that, it's for me. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's for me. The way that I have uh, begun to understand the concept of nothing exists outside of yourself. It's sort of uh, like if you have a diamond. You know, a diamond has many different facets of it. So I liken myself to the diamond, and every single one of you and everything else is like a facet of that diamond, yet it is the one diamond. So that is how I, in my mind, am able to make the connection if that helps in any way, if it helps one person, you know, at least, because it's, it's like that, you know, the diamond is one thing, but it has all these different facets. So that, that was all. Thank you. Uh, I'm a little confused. Uh, also, I come from a part of the country where we've taken bullshit to an art form, so. <laughs> I'll give you a lot to work and, with. And can, you tell, can you tell me one more time what part of the country that is? <laughs> where, where Joe comes from, oh. remember? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Is that it? Okay. Now, I'm a little confused on the... Uh, yesterday, I thought I heard something like, uh, don't expect a miracle because of certain things. And then I, I heard this young lady talk about cleaning on something and then I hear well if you clean don't think about anything so I'm I'm kind of confused on the on the etiquette I guess of, of cleaning uh, if something that I'm concerned about or comes up in my life or you watch on news and you clean on that thing what, no, what does that mean? No you're cleaning about it not on it because what you may experience at, the, at 15 bits of information millions are going below which you're not understanding so you may be cleaning on you think on your experience over here, but below divinity is just going at it. Stuff you're not even aware of. Again, okay. let me give you an example. Again, I'm coming back to the to the person in Fort Collins who said to me, I clean um, and I got a flat tire. Now she has an expectation. Now that means we're gonna treat God like a concierge. We're gonna say to God, This is what I want and I want it now. Divinity is gone. Okay. Talking to me? <laughs> yeah. So the idea is you're, you're going to just do the cleaning. You don't know what, what needs to be cleaned. And divinity who knows everything will do whatever is right and perfect for you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I tell you, when you have intentions, you're, you're, you're really saying to God, this is what I want, and I want it now. And you should see the finger of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> So I think my friend uh, Owen Court really got it down pat, and that you're only going, you're putting the ultimate goal is zero first. So if you want to look for a theme, it's zero first, because it, it zero is the is the temple of the divine. When Jesus said, "I am going to go and prepare a place for you," he's, he's talking about the purity of heart. So here is, here, is the, here is the holy temple of your being, and in this holy temple you will find divinity will show up. And that's what you're going for, or you can stay and not clean, stay stuck in chaos. So now you have a choice, but this is you experience the divinity, or you experience the data. And it requires a lot of believing. Thank you. Um, I've been pondering a lot about this and learning so much um, this, this, this go around. Um, there are a lot of people here in the room that um, work in various healing professions. And I'm aware that a lot of us have a great deal to clean and people come to us in that way. How can we be responsible and clear that we're not adding 
to more of the chaos because we are, are in our profession we might treat something supposedly that we have been schooled to understand in a certain kind of way how do we continuously clean and stay clear on the zero while we're also engaging in our profession that people come to us for some kind of assistance in. You know what I'm here in the universe says you're only interested in what? When you when you would any of you how many of you would be willing don't sit. Oh, okay. How many of you would be willing to do your work without pay? Come on, give us a break. How would how would you make a living? You have to depend on somebody else to do it for you. I can't imagine that. So she's really talking about, well, I mean, how do I make, how do I make my money? She may not say, think so, but that's what she's saying. Isn't that so? Yeah, well, it's very easy to make a lot of money. You can talk to Joe, he's done it. <laughs> and the way to make a lot of money is start from zero. You can call yourself dooga booga boo boo therapy, or blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter what you call it but you have to be 100% responsible. So if you have, you give a, 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 if you have a therapy called woo woo like that, then you make sure that before that person shows up, you have done your cleaning. Not only with that person, the person's family relatives and ancestors, the person has an address, you gotta clean with the address. That person always, anybody with problems will always show up on a piece of land that's gonna cause problems. So you're, you're having to be thorough. Well, family relatives and answers, what the, so I'm not interested in the problem. I'm interested in where they live, what their family relatives and ancestors, you think I know the problem? I don't know the problem. But if I clean, the problem will get, will disappear, inspiration will show up. So she needs to be deadly honest in that you're concerned about how, you, how do you make money doing your job? And the, the, the answer is very simple. It doesn't matter what you call it, but if you're here, right here, because you were willing to erase that, you won't ever have to worry about wealth. You will have peace beyond all understanding. Peace beyond all. And that's the greatest wealth in the world. And everything else. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom, and all else will be added, called inspiration. So how do you make lots of money? Be 100% responsible. For what? with the crap that's in you that attracts this, these people. So here's, here's you, here's the divinity, creates everything like that. Now here, here's you, and here's the, the so-called client. But the a client only comes because you, you, you bug them, yeah. <laughs> like that. So now you're stuck. And so the answer is very simple. Be 100% responsible, do your cleaning, let the divinity erase that, erase that, erase that. Everybody gets inspired, including Mother Earth, and then they send thousands of people to come and see you. You'll have more clients than you know what to do with. Then you'd have to what? Franchise. <laughs> <laughs> the franchise is called oogle 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 oogle. That's right. So be 100% responsible. The answer for you. And I feel pain inside every time I think about um, putting a diagnosis. Well, then you should give it up. You should clean it up. The pain, what do you think the pain is on the other side? Oh, yeah. so, gargantuan. Yeah. So you have therapists who commit suicide. Listen, yeah. therapists who end up on drugs. I mean, so give it up. Be at zero. Everybody else will be fine. Yes? So can you please expand a little bit about the ad, finding out about their address, family, ancestors, and so on. If you were doing a therapy session, how would you prepare well, for it? First of all, I wouldn't do it. Oh, you wouldn't? Uh, just in case I did. <laughs> okay. So here's you. Here's the client. The client has, has an address, and it has, it has the three cells. 
which means I say to the client, can you tell me how you're coming? Well, the, 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 the route that they take has an address, has the three cells. Everything has three cells. So now I'm getting all the information. This is why I, I, this is why I talked to Joe, uh, my friend, Okua, because I want to get all of the information, as thorough as I can get, before you show up. And all I do is just do the cleaning. Now, so as I do the cleaning, this is Mother Earth, this is the route that gets clean. By the way, this is why you have jet lag. Jet lag is that the airplane flies through angelic kingdom and smashes it. And you're responsible. Yeah. Yeah. So now the airplane flies. Some of you are going home to New Zealand. It has to cross certain meridians. You ought to clean with that. You're going to cross the ocean. You ought to clean with that. You ought to be cleaning with all this stuff. That's what you're here to do. Because if you don't clean, it's going to bury you. Yeah, again, again. But it's easy. I think I'm watching my friend over here. It's like, wow. He's doing his cleaning. This is why this, this class is so wonderful because my friend over here is 100% responsible for creating this. I'm just coming along to see what I get to clean. Oh, oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Like, for example, curses. Some of you bring curses into the room. Some of you, I mean, you really do. You, know, you get headache, curse, particularly if it's migraine. It's, you know, you're kind of cursing people, some of you. So the idea, just do your cleaning, and you'll be fine. Really, you'll be fine, and so will the world. But you got to be sorrow. Mm. Anybody else? I'll give it back to Joe. <coughs> um, I wanted to know if you could expand about um, doing the ha when you're um, flying. Are you supposed to do it every hour? I'm sorry? When you're flying, say my flight. Yeah. So just every hour yeah. that I'm traveling throughout. Yeah. Okay. So, so what the ha will do, let this be the airplane. Let this be the route. Let this be you. Let this be the other, other, the other folks, whoever they are on the airplane, including the luggage. You cannot believe what gets on the luggage. I mean, incredible stuff. So now, now here's me, and I just do the ha. And I do the ha for each hour of the flight. I do the ha in, in the terminal. I do, I do the ha before I get on the airplane. I talk to the airplane. Hello. Is there anything I need to know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, you know, then you have doubts you should get on this airplane. But you do the airplane, the airplane goes burp. I mean, one day I heard the airplane burp. It, it had this kind of colicky problem. You know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you guys think it's, uh, yeah, funny. You see, so now I, I'm going to clean up all my stuff because they're all connected. Everything is connected. This is the connection you don't want to be in, this, this connection called um, Akka. You don't want to be in that connection. So I do the ha, talk to the airplane, talked to the child and me, said, well, is there anything I missed? Is there anything we should be doing? And then we make an appeal to the divinity, then the information comes down, comes down, comes down, comes down, and the divinity will erase the data. Cut the ties, cut the ties, cut the ties. Everybody's zero, and then the divinity will give me what is perfect for me, what is perfect for the, the route, what is perfect for the airplane, and then what is perfect for everybody else. Yeah. I have a question about, not a question, I just want to understand like aging and... Do you want to understand what? Like 
the body's perfect, so the body shouldn't be aging. We bought this data, and so the data is in us, and so we have these signs that show up as whatever they are, right? And I was thinking about, like, as the, like, I guess a lot of people in this room are. No, having, don't say a lot. Oh, of okay, say uh, you. Okay. Yeah. yeah right. Uh, stay close to home. So stay close to home. Okay. So like, the the idea that your hormones change is that because of data that's accumulated over time. So it's really not. No, I don't know about accumulate, but it's data playing. So you would just talk to your oh, your yeah. body, and you would just say, just like you talk to the child. No, not your body. You're talking to the data and the child. Forget about the body. Okay. The body is a consequence. Okay. It's an effect. You're talking to the wrong being. Okay. So it's like pharmaceutical companies do it for the effect because they think it's a body, but no. What we're saying is in your soul, in your subconscious. Right, because the effect would be that people have these things like I have hot flashes or something like that, but yeah. it's really just the data that's oh, playing, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you. I, I, I did a, I, I was part of a pro, part of a, Study. I was asked if I would do a study with a doctoral student at the University of Hawaii on high blood pressure. She did a PhD this past year, if I can find it. I'm going to give it to the cardiologist from Brazil. Yeah. Let's see if I can find it. So, this is on, if you are interested, uh, I can't give it to you because the copyright, but you can, if you're interested in this study, Ethnicity and Disease is the, is the journal. It's volume 15, autumn 207. So here is the summary made by the journal on the study. This article described a study of 23 primarily Asian, Hawaiian, and other Pacific Islander adult, adults with high blood pressure, hypertension, who attended an intervention class of self-identity of Ho'oponopono. This was the first time study to find out that high blood pressure was improved after the patient learned the process known as self-identity, and added it to his or her own regular high blood pressure treatment. This process is an approach to develop a better working relationship uh, among the conscious, subconscious, and superconscious minds, representing the body, the mind, body, and spirit. I don't know where they got that from. Allowing individuals to understand themselves better. For this study, we wanted to find out if, when the body, mind, and spirit work together, the individual will release sources of stress, tension, well gone. In our study, participants attended a class three and a half hours only, which included a series of lectures and discussions, problem solving, uh, tools, question and answer period, all that sort of stuff. Participants were taught simple processes such as breathing, you got that, prayers, we got love you, meditation. Two months following the class, the participant's blood pressure was reduced. The results suggested this program may work to control hypertension. And all these people did it with breathe, but I did the cleaning of their home, I did the cleaning of the, their medication, I did all that. Yeah. But it's, it's beautiful because the, the, um, the results were like 0 .0001, which is very unusual. So I'm going to be ending, I'm coming back to Hawaii on February 1st and 6th to do a three and a half uh, hour long uh, distance learning on how to deal with hypertension. And all you have to do is clean up. Yeah. Yeah. So you're only dealing with, with effects, we're gonna deal with the cause. 